welcome to the 8th lecture of module 5 we are discussing distillation in the last lecture we have covered total reflux another is minimum reflux a total reflux we used to get the minimum number of trage or stages required to obtain a given separation in the last class we have discussed how to obtain the minimum reflux using mccabe thiele method so we have discussed in the last class minimum reflux infinite number of stages. We have seen how to calculate using Fensky equation. So, we have also seen that if inflection point in the equilibrium curve and we generally use tangent pinch point or tangent pinch. So, today we will discuss Another important thing when we say reflux, whether it is saturated reflux at its bubble points or reflux below its bubble points, reflux below its bubble point, or we can say soft cooled reflux this is one thing we will discuss today another topic which we will discuss is that the use of live steam use of open steam or life steam. Let us start with reflux below its bubble point or soft cooled reflux. Sometimes the vapor which is coming out at the top of the tower is condensed and then cooled below its bubble point. And when subcooled reflux return to the tower at the top of the section, the subcooled reflux immediately reaches its bubble point and for that it takes the energy from the upcoming vapor. If we see this is the pit and this is the top section which is cooled and then return the reflux this is L naught and this is D. So, the reflux ratio R is equal to L naught by D and as the liquid which is coming out L naught over here it will take the heat from the vapor which is upcoming and then the vapor gets condensed and mixed with this L naught and flows down. So, the liquid flows in these sections becomes more and vapor flow become reduced. It is very important to find out the reflux which is coming out over here is known as external reflux. This is known as external 
reflux or we can say it is returned reflux. So, it is called external EXT and we can say also the returned reflux reflux and the liquid which is coming which would be R inside the tower it should be L by D. So, this is known as internal reflux ratio internal reflux or we can say effective reflux. So, we can name it as internal. In order to know our internal, we must know the liquid flow rate. L. We will discuss now how to calculate this L. Let us take T C R is the temperature of the cold reflux and T B R is the bubble point then the energy required to heat the reflux energy required heat the reflux is equal to we can write Q is equal to L naught is the flow rate C P R M R T B R minus T C R and vapor condensed condensed which is equal to Q by M R lambda which is equal to L naught C P R M R T B R minus T C R divided by M R lambda. CPR, this is specific heat of reflux in unit of kilo joule per kg Kelvin MR is the Average molecular weight lambda latent heat of condensation of vapor heat of condensation of vapor. So, which is kilo joule per kg. Then we can calculate the internal liquid flow rate. So, the internal liquid flow rate L, which is L is equal to L naught plus L naught C 
CPR MR into TBR minus TCR divided by MR lambda. So, this MR MR will cancel out. So, we can write L naught plus L naught C P R T B R minus T C R divided by lambda. So, if we divide both sides by D, D. So, we will have L by D would be equal to L naught by D plus L naught by D C P R T B R minus T C R divided by lambda. As we know L by D is equal to R internal and L naught by D is equal to R external. So, we can write this equations R internal would be R external in plus R external into this term. So, we can write R internal would be equal to R external plus R external into C P R into T B R minus T C R divided by lambda. So, this we can write R external into 1 plus C P R T B R minus T C R divided by lambda this term. So, the rectifying sections operating line y n plus 1 would be equal to r internal divided by r internal plus 1 x n plus x d divided by r internal plus 1. Now, let us take an example how to calculate the internal reflux ratio and then the number of plates required for a given separation. A mixture of 45 mole percent n hexane and 55 mole percent n heptane is subjected to continuous fractionation in a tray column at 1 atmosphere total pressure. The distillates contains 95 percent n hexane and the residue contains 5 percent n hexane. The feed is saturated liquid the vapor leaving the top of the tower is condensed and cooled below its bubble point. The reflux is returned to the tower at 62 degree centigrade and the reflux ratio of 2.5 is used. The relative volatility of inaction in the mixture is 2.36 determine the number of ideal trays required for this separation using mackep thiele method. The following data were given boiling point of 95 percent n action reflux is 72 degree centigrade, heat of vaporization of the top product of 95 percent n action which is 7500 kilo calorie per kilo mole, heat capacity of n action is 25 kilo calorie per kilo mole Kelvin and heat capacity of n heptane is 30 kilo calorie per kilo mole Kelvin. So, we can calculate the heat capacity of reflux 
heat capacity of reflux from the data given C P R is equal to 95 percent of N x n into 25 which is given over here plus 0.05 into 30 which is over here. So, which is equal to 25.25 kilo calorie per k mole Kelvin. Now, T B R is given T B R which is equal to 273 plus 72 which is equal to 345 k and T C R is 273 plus 62 is 335 k and we know that R internal would be equal to R external into 1 plus C P R into T B R minus T C R divided by lambda. So, if we substitute external reflux ratio which is given. So, let us consider instead of 2.5 is 2.2 if we use then it would be 2 into 1 plus 25.25 into 345 minus 335 divided by 7500. So, which would be equal to 2.5. 07. So, internal reflux ratio is 2.07. Now, the data which are given x d is 0.95, x w is 0.05, q is equal to 1 saturated liquid. So, slope is equal to q by q minus 1 is equal to infinite. So, this is the point fit point and this is the q line which is vertical line at the fit point of 0.45 because z f is 0.45. So, we can calculate y n plus 1 would be r internal divided by r internal plus 1 x n plus x d by r internal plus 1. So, the intercept x d by r internal plus 1 would be equal to 0.95 by 2.07 plus 1 which would be equal to 0.31. So, at 0.31 which is x d by r internal plus 1. So, this is the value. So, we know the intercept values and we know the x d x d point over here. So, we can plot the rectifying section operating line. So, this is the rectifying section operating line rectifying operating line which is extended to the intercept and then we know x w x w point and we know the feed line. So, intersection point we know. So, we plot between this two point stripping section operating line. This is the stripping section operating line and then 
if we follow the construction of the stages we see that the number of ideal plates number of ideal plates are 12.5 now we will discuss stage efficiency particularly will be more interested to murphy efficiency and number of real stages what we do in mass transfer operations for the calculations of the number of ideal stages required for a given separation we assume that the each stage is in equilibrium the vapor and liquid leaving the trace are in equilibrium but in reality they are not true so the ideal stage assumptions or equilibrium assumptions is an approximation so there is a deviation about the efficiency of the ideal trace we assumed in reality to calculate this efficiency of the trace there are three types of efficiency which we generally use one is known as overall efficiency another term which we use is the local efficiency and third which we use is the murphy efficiency so overall efficiency is the simplistic approach and it is the ratio ratio of number of ideal stages to the number of actual stages so this is a single efficiency which generally not valid because the efficiency of stage varies from trace to trace and it depends on the different factors like the geometry and design of the trace and then flow rates and paths of all streams compositions this varies from trace to trace this is the simplistic approach to use the overall efficiency another type of efficiency which is uh, most accurate but very difficult to apply is the local efficiency defined at single point on a particular tray use this efficiency is very difficult the murphy efficiency which is the common choice most common choice now we will discuss murphy plate efficiency it is the ratio of the actual composition difference between two successive plates and that predicted by equilibrium which we can write em is equal to yn minus yn plus 1 these are the two successive stages composition divided by y equilibrium of n minus y n plus 1 so this is most common practice to use and the actual enrichment enrichment of the vapor for nth tray 
we can write is y n minus y n plus 1 would be equal to E m times y equilibrium minus y n plus 1. To find out the number of real trays required for a particular operations, what we have to do using this efficiency, we have to draw a pseudo equilibrium line. Draw a pseudo equilibrium line which is vertical which is vertical distance vertical distance from the operating line E m times the distance between the distance between the operating line line and equilibrium curve equilibrium curve we have to draw another pseudo equilibrium line and the vertical distance between the operating line and the equilibrium line should be E m times. And then we have to do the staircase construction as we did before draw staircase construction to obtain number of real stages. So, this staircase construction should be between the pseudo equilibrium line and the operating line. As we said the Murphy efficiency we can define as the ratio of the actual composition difference between the two successive plates and that predicted by equilibrium. So, there are two types of Murphy efficiency we can define one is in terms of the vapor, another in terms of the liquid. So, E m v which we can define y n minus y n plus 1 divided by y n star which is equilibrium minus y n plus 1. And this we can see the ratio between the S o and P o ratio between this vertical. So, this is the operating line and this is the actual equilibrium line this one the equilibrium line and this the ratio of S o by P o this is the vapor efficiency. Similarly, in terms of the liquid we can write E m l is x n minus x n plus 1 divided by x n star minus x n plus 1 which is the ratio between the S m divided by n m. So, this is the ratio. So, this is the liquid efficiency and this is the vapor efficiency. In sieve trays generally we use this efficiency between 0 0.6 to 0 0.75 and this is very easy to calculate the effective equilibrium curve we can write y effective would be equal to y plus e m v multiplied by y equilibrium of n minus y. So, this y is nothing but the operating line curve 
line curve. So, then we can calculate the y effective and we can draw the pseudo equilibrium curve which is shown over here in dotted line. So, this is the pseudo equilibrium line. Now, let us take an example to see how to calculate the number of stages using more free efficiency. A mixture of 45 mole percent A and 55 mole percent B is subjected to continuous fractionation in a tray column at one atmosphere total pressure. The distillates contains 90 percent A and the residue contains 5 percent A. The feed is saturated liquid. A reflux ratio of 2.5 is used. Determine the number of real trays required for this separation if the Murphy free efficiency is 75 percent. The equilibrium data for the system is given below. So, these are the equilibrium data which is given. Using this equilibrium data which are given, we can plot the equilibrium curve. And then the data which are given x d is equal to 0.9 and uh, r is given 2.5. So, we can calculate x d by r plus 1, which is equal to 0.9 divided by 2.5 plus 1, which is equal to 0.257. We know the point x d x d, we know the point at 0.9 and 0.9 and then we can plot the operating line through this. So, this is the point we can calculate y effective using the equation given earlier y plus E m into y equilibrium n minus y. So, using this we can obtain y effective and with the y effective this is the plot which is drawn over here this is the pseudo equilibrium curve. If we plot from this line and if we plot the staircase construction from this point so, the number of stages would be 1, 2, 3 and this is 4. Total number of real stages required is equal to 4.5 the staircase construction is drawn between the operating line and the pseudo equilibrium line which is drawn using the Murphy free efficiency. So, now let us consider another important topic which is use of open stream. In general we supply the heat using the partial reboiler heat is supplied to this and by taking the liquid which is coming out from the tower it is heated with a reboiler where steam is not directly injected to the tower. Here particularly for a solution which contains water or some other components then this aqueous solutions may be convenient to separate using live steam. Live steam is used to separate aqueous solutions, aqueous solutions containing other components. So, in this case, 
the reboiler which is used in general is not necessary. Reboiler is not necessary. The steam which is injected at the bottom directly to the color bubbling through the liquid. bubbling through the liquid. Now, if we do the overall mass balance over the tower using live steam overall mass balance here F is the feet plus steam S would be equal to D plus W. So, this is the overall mass balance. Now, component balance, component A balance F Z F plus S Y S is equal to d x d plus w x w, where s is the mole of steam mole per hour of steam injected and y s would be 0 is the mole fraction. fraction of A in the steam. So, the operating line in the rectifying section above the fit tray would be same as we derived earlier rectifying OL rectifying operating line is same as derived before. Now, we will do the total mass balance and material balance over the stripping section. We assume saturated steam is injected. Then the total mass balance L m plus s is equal to g m plus 1 plus W and component balance A balance. If we do that, we can write L m x m plus S into y s is equal to g m plus 1 y m plus 1 plus w x w. Now, if we solve it l m x m plus s into 0 would be equal to g m plus 1 y m plus 1 plus w x w it will give y m plus 1 would be l m by z m plus 1 x m 
minus W by G m plus 1 x w. So, we can write since there is no reboiler L m would be w and steam is saturated steam is saturated. So, we can write S is equal to G m plus 1. So, therefore, the operating line for stripping section would be y m plus 1 would be equal to L by G m plus 1 x m minus L by G m plus 1 x w or we can write w by s x m minus w by s x w and then slope of the operating line is l by g m plus 1 or w by s is equal to y m plus 1 divided by x m plus x w. So, this is the slope of the operating line stripping O L. In the next lecture, we will discuss how to calculate the stream requirement and number of stages required for a given separation. Thank you.